I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. And this is a problem. All of my sanders ended up on this failed piece of furniture. They take up too much space, they're hard to use, the dust collection's terrible. So today, we're gonna make a flip top sanding tool station with dust collection that solves all those problems. Let's give it a shot. So there are some legitimate problems with this entire area over here that just make it frustrating. I mean, it's usable, but it's frustrating. This cabinet is just a mistake that ended up over here. And so it's a place for storage underneath it. It's really just a place to stack stuff. And then the sanders kind of ended up on top of it. This one has stuff over here and over here. Plus the dust collection port is on this side, whereas the vacuum cleaner is all the way on the other end. It's also a little bit too low. This one's okay, but I do have to reach past it to get to the on and off switch. It's way back here in the back. That doesn't feel great. And there's a grinding stone over here on this side that I can't use at all because there's other stuff in the way. This one's for leather, so it doesn't even need to be over here. We're just gonna move that. And this one actually works out okay, except for the fact that it's just enclosed in a corner. So if you have a big piece that you need to move against the sander, it's just not super comfortable. So I wanna move all these tools out onto something that I can pull into the middle of the shop where I've got plenty of working space on each side and I wanna integrate dust collection. For that, I've been using this shop vac. It works pretty well, except that I have to just plug in the hose into the individual sander or near the sander that I'm working on. The one all the way on the end, it can't reach. So our goals with this are to add in dust collection for all the sanders, make it movable so I can actually get it out and make it easier to work with, and I just wanna make the whole thing smaller. One great way to do that is with a flip top tool stand. I've never done this before, and there's lots of videos about how to make them, but I have an idea that's really simple, but I think it'll make them easier to use. So the first thing we have to do is cut down some plywood. I just realized that I kind of take this for granted and not everybody knows about it. It's this little thing right here. A few years back, I made this whole extension off the table and it has like a crosscut sled and a bunch of storage and all that stuff. But this little fold out table has been huge. It's so helpful when you're trying to cut a full sheet to have just a little bit extra space out here. And this little shelf can hold about 300 pounds. So it's really helpful. Plus, if you need to get rid of it, it's got some really quick little latches on it. Fold right back down. All right. Let me finish up the cutting. I've got all the pieces cut, but I actually haven't told you what we're doing, so let me get to that. Basically, it's gonna be a cart that has two parts to it. So on this side, we're gonna have a wall here and a wall on the other side. This is the fixed side. And inside this little box, we're gonna have the vacuum cleaner, and then on top of it, we'll put the spindle sander. And then you can stand right here to use the spindle sander. You can reach in from that end to turn on and off the vacuum. The hose is gonna come up right here so it can connect to this tool or the ones that are gonna be over here because this side is the flip top. So we're gonna have a flip top that is right there with a sander there and a sander there. Obviously the side needs to be open here so the flip top can flip around. But once you've got it locked in place, you can just hook on the hose to whatever tool that you're using at the time. Now there's a couple other things I wanna to add to this just to make it really easy to use. I've been using like retractable casters on everything for a long time. They're awesome. I'm gonna be putting those down here. And I've also got a really kind of simple but clever way to make the flip top lock into place. Speaking of the flip top, let's talk about how that's gonna work. So the flip top is basically like every other flip top I've ever seen. There's two uprights, pieces of plywood with a shelf in between them. And on the inside of that shelf is a pipe that runs all the way through. That's gonna be centered on the shelf and has to be the same distance from the top of both of these pieces. It's the pivot point that the entire thing works around. It's actually pretty easy to do, but it's really important that the hole right here and right here are in the exact same place between the two pieces. The way I'm gonna do that is to clamp all four corners of this together so that they are exactly in the same place and then I'm gonna drill one hole through both of them using a drill press. My friend Brad from Fix This Build That did this same project but instead of a drill press he did it by hand ended up with the hole kind of at an angle and it caused all sorts of problems. So use a drill press or a drill guide if you can or just measure them and drill them individually.
Quick note before we start assembling, that hole that I just drilled is a three quarter inch hole, but the pipe that's going in it is a half inch pipe, and that's the inner diameter. The outer diameter of this half inch pipe is just a hair under three quarters of an inch, which means it's gonna be a perfect fit for this. I just wanted to point that out because when you go to look for three quarter inch pipe, it's gonna be a lot bigger than this, so get half inch. Now assembly for this is gonna be dead simple. This is a really easy one to build on purpose. I've got the base here and I'm just gonna be stacking the four sides on top of it and driving in screws from the bottom. I'm gonna use butt joints, glue, and screws. It doesn't need to be fancy, especially if it works. Now getting all these pieces held in place so that you can get glue in the joints, keep the joints flush, pre-drill the holes, drive in the screws, it can be kinda of tough unless you've got somebody around or if you have a brad nailer, which is what I'm gonna do. You may be surprised that I'm not pocket holing this thing together. And you certainly could, I just don't want to. Now, I get that this is a very confusing thing to look at, and that's because it hasn't been upright yet. So the flip top's gonna go right here, and it has to flip around, but as you can see, this piece is not supported well. So, we are gonna have to do some pocket holes so we can put a little wall down here and back here to lock these pieces together, and then we can move on to actually making the flip top. This top piece is just gonna get screwed in, just like the other ones, but before I do that, I have to drill a hole. Now, I'm choosing to put a spindle sander here. You can put whatever you want, but I measured my spindle sander and then left a few inches behind it so that I could drill a hole. That hole is for the hose to come from the shop vac, which lives down here. So it's gonna be able to come up and plug into this tool or into that tool, and it'll be usable for all the tools on this cart. So in your case, just measure the size of hose you have for your shop vac and drill a hole right there. With that, the dust collection is in place. It can now hook up to whatever tool we have up here. So, of my four original requirements for this thing, dust collection is done. The other thing was that it needed to be smaller, and you can see that this is already smaller than the space that it was in before. So, we're gonna mark that one as done. Next, we're gonna move on to the flip top, but before we do that, I wanna clean up all these edges, just add some edge banding to make it look a little bit nicer. Now in the past when I've made shop carts and things, I like to cut a really thin strip of hardwood, like walnut, and glue it and nail it to the outside edge of all the plywood. I think it looks nice, the contrast is nice, and because it's hard, it protects these outer edges from wear. Unfortunately, right now, I don't have any solid walnut to do that with, but I do have walnut edge banding, and it'll look pretty much the same. And even though a veneer edge banding like this isn't gonna add any protection or strength to this, it does make it look a lot nicer. It goes from this to this. One of my other requirements for this thing is that it's movable, and you could just put casters underneath it, roll it around, that'd be fine, but I don't want it to move when I'm using it. I want it to be stable on the ground. One of the ways that I've done that many times in the past is to use these casters. These are called step-down casters, I think, and that's because they have a little step on them that locks the wheel down into place when you need to move them, and when you don't, you lift this up, the weight of the cabinet pushes it down to the ground and pushes the wheel off of the ground. I've used these things before on all sorts of stuff. They're on this workbench right here. They're on both of my rolling tool stands. They're awesome. In fact, they're so awesome that I ended up buying a bunch of extra sets of these just to have them in the shop. And so when I went to make this thing, I just got them off the shelf. They're handy. I'll put a link to them and all the other stuff I use down in the description. So far we've made a box with wheels, which is not a big deal, but the flip top is next. And it's not a big deal, but it's kind of cool. We got the pipe that I showed you earlier. This goes through these two holes and becomes the thing that our flip top is gonna flip around. This doesn't necessarily need to spin. The thing spins around it. And so you can fix this in place however you want to. I'm gonna cut mine down and put some kind of wooden plywood caps on the outside, but 
Because this has threading on each end, you could put a flange on there and actually screw it into the outside of the thing. I think Drew Fisher from Fisher's Woodshop did that, which is a really good idea. But basically, you just need this in place so that it won't slide out in either direction. I'm gonna worry about locking this in place later on. Right now, I'm gonna work on sandwiching the plywood that goes around this so that we've got our table to flip. I made a little mistake earlier. I told you that this pipe was three quarters of an inch on the outside. I just measured it, it's actually seven eighths of an inch. So it will not work when I'm trying to stack up three pieces of plywood. Luckily, we can just switch pipes to something that's actually even cheaper. This is a piece of electrical conduit. It's not as thick, not as strong, but it's still probably gonna work just fine in this situation. And it's three quarters of an inch on the outside. So using that pipe instead, we can just stack up three layers of plywood and they'll pivot right around this bar. It'll work out. While I'm waiting on that glue to dry, I'm gonna add the little fold-out table that I was talking about before. So this piece is gonna just fit right there. It's gonna be flush with that surface, which doesn't actually matter, but that's what I'm gonna do. And to mount it, I'm gonna use the brackets that I was talking about. These are similar to the ones that I used before, but basically they mount this direction to the surface, and then they've got a little catch right there. They're spring-loaded, so when you hit that catch, it pops up. And then when you wanna close it, you press it again and put it down. So I'm gonna mount these to the underside of the table and then make sure that I can get the tops flush and mount it to the side. As I was putting those on, they kind of acted weird and I figured something out. These are not ones I've used before. They're similar, but they're not the same. The ones I've used before had a connection point between this and this, meaning that those two pieces are always locked together. These don't, which means if you do it wrong, they can get separated and then they just don't work. I would advise against these. I'll link the ones that I've used before down in the description in case you want to check them out. When I cut these pieces out to make this little table, I left a little bit of a gap on each side because I didn't want it to be really tight or rub or anything, but because of that gap, it can now move left and right within the space, and so it still has a chance of rubbing on this as it's going up and down. So, 3D printer to the rescue, I printed some little washers that I can fit right inside these gaps around the pipe, and it should keep this thing centered. I was able to design those little spacers in Fusion 360 in just a couple of minutes and they didn't take very long to print. I also made a little grommet to cover up this hole just to make it look a little bit nicer. But I wanted to point that out because Fusion 360 is incredibly powerful for designing little stuff like that, but also I designed this entire cart in it and I've done entire rooms in it. It's very, very powerful and it's a great way to take your ideas, flesh them out, figure out how things move and solve a bunch of problems before you ever buy a piece of material. Unfortunately, Fusion 360 does have a steep learning curve, but that's why we made our online course to help you learn it, and the course is called Fusion 360 for Makers. We've taught thousands of people how to use Fusion, how to turn their ideas into reality using a great piece of software, and I would love to help you learn that as well. You can go to fusion360formakers.com or hit the link down in the description. It's got a coupon code attached to it, and you can go watch the first few videos for free and see if you like it. You've got the course forever. You can go through it at your own pace as many times as you want. And if you decide it's not for you, I'll give you your money back. Either way, I would love for you to be able to use Fusion 360 to make your ideas real and to make your time in the shop more productive and more fun. Go down, hit the link, check it out. Let me know what you think. Now, if you don't wanna learn how to use Fusion, but you just wanna build this cart, we're gonna have a link to some plans down in the description as well. Go check those out. Now it's time to add the hardware to this thing, and I think I've got a better solution than anybody else that I've seen. So the thing is, all four corners of this flip top need to be locked into these outside walls. It's gotta be sturdy and it has to stay in place. I've seen a bunch of different solutions. Some people will cut notches in these outside walls and then they have a swinging bolt that goes around the edge and tightens in. Some people use window latches, which is simple, but seems a little weak to me. And so we're gonna use something that's kind of in between all of those. It's strong, it's simple, it gets out of the way when you're not using them. And that is a simple gate latch. 
This is one of those situations where you look at it and you're like, that's incredibly simple, and you're right, it is. That's the point. Now this is a spring-loaded bolt, so you can pull it back and forth to make it go in and out of the sidewalls. But the important thing here is that it also has these little locking pins, so when you twist it, it will lock in the open position. That way you can get all of these pins out of the way and focus on flipping the tool over and getting it in the right position, and then you just lock them back into place. We've got four of these, we're gonna put two on each side, and we're gonna install them retracted, right? So the bolt is out of the way and we know exactly where to drill the hole in the sidewall. But remember, the two that are over here are on top, but when it flips over, they're gonna be on the bottom of that side. So we're gonna do these first, then flip them over so we know exactly where those other holes need to be. Now we want to make sure that both sets of bolts and both sets of holes all line up. So with these in place, I'm going to undo these, flip them over, and then mount the new ones to match these same holes. And then once I get those in place and this thing is locked in, I will trace the holes on that side and drill those holes the same way. So now, it's locked in on both sides. Unlock it. Flip it over. Perfect. Okay, I think it's done. So now it's time to just load it up with some heavy tools. Now I set out to do four kind of major things with this project and I wanna make sure that I actually accomplished all of them. One, I wanted dust collection built in. That's easy enough and it works super well. It works way better than how I had it set up beforehand, so check. Is it movable? Yes, the casters are fantastic and I put them on pretty much everything. They can lift like 600 pounds. They're awesome and you should put them on everything that you build for your shop, so check. Number three, is it smaller? I do think it's smaller. It literally takes up less space than all of the stuff that I had there before. Plus, you can push it up against the wall in two different orientations depending on what you need to use. So it is smaller and that orientation thing is a bonus I didn't think about. And the last one, I don't know if I pulled it off or not. The bolt hardware that I used for my flip top, I think, is simpler to use, simpler to install, and is very strong. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Is the hardware that I chose better than what everybody else chose or is it about the same? Regardless, if you want plans for this project to build one for yourself, links to the plans and to the Fusion course are both gonna be down in the description. Be sure to go check them out. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. And then, while it's stable, pre-drill and screw it in the drive, drive in this. They take up too much room. They're hard to use. The dust detection, dust, dust detection. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So you can use the brad nailer to hold the pieces together while you actually put it. Hmm.